What's good, people? Thanks for joining me for a reaction. Uh, it's good to be back. Um, glad you guys stuck around for me again. I know it's been times I've had spaces, but I think this is the longest gap that has ever been with with me uh, not putting anything out. Um, I'm sure I explained already what was going on. So, um, without further ado, let's get back into it, alright? This is a death battle. Looks like it is between Sephiroth and Virgil. One is from Final Fantasy, the other one is from Devil May Cry. Both are serious badasses, if I remember correctly, especially Virgil. That dude is, he's, he's beast mode altogether. Um, and honestly, calling this fight from right now, I'm going to say Virgil. I don't, dude's healing, healing ability is sick. You know what I'm saying? He's a demon. He's part demon, whatever. Or is he full demon? And Dante's part demon. Whatever, it don't matter really. Um, shout out my whole Mike Hoback. This was uh, for you right here. This was your suggestion. Um, running them down. I'm trying to pick up where I left off. And like I said, thanks for being patient and waiting for me. So here we go. Sephiroth versus Virgil in a death battle. Let's see what's cracking when it happened out there with the people and the swords and the beef and all that stuff. Let's go. The great philosopher Plato once said, the measure of a man is what he does with power. But to these guys, power is the measure of a man. <laughs> Sephiroth, the fearsome one-winged angel of Final Fantasy. And Virgil, the half-demon son of Sparta oh, from yeah, Devil May Cry. He's know. Wiz and I'm Boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. <laughs> Through the millennia, legends were passed of a source of unlimited energy, the Promised Land. Unfortunately, all hope of finding this sacred ground had been lost. Until the Shinra Electric Power Company excavated the remains of a being believed to hail from the very land they sought. They called this weird naked purple lady Genova and thought that if they could bring her back to life, she could help them find the promised land. But apparently they just didn't have any phoenix downs. If they couldn't resurrect a being who could lead them to the promised land, Shinra decided they would simply create their own. After many experiments infusing Genova's cells with those of a human's, they finally found their savior. His name was Sephiroth. With hair like that, it's no wonder he was created in a lab. Look at how majestic that mane is. According to Final Fantasy lore, Sephiroth has to use an entire bottle of shampoo and conditioner every single time he bathes. Why do you know that? Did you join his fan club or something? Uh, for research. Uh, but Shinra wasn't interested in Sephiroth for his hair. Instead, he was an essential part of their soldier program. Wait, wait. This electric company has their own private military? I'd hate to miss a payment with those guys, especially if they sent Seph after me. I mean, look at the ridiculously long sword he keeps with him. That's his Masamune. This seven-foot-two behemoth of a blade is wow. a lot like the no dodgy swords they used back in feudal Japan. But instead of wielding something long with two hands like those, Sephiroth only needs one. Even that speaks nothing of his effectiveness as a warrior. Yeah, you know when people spread legends of someone, they usually make him out wow. to be even better than he really is? It's the total opposite oh with gosh. Sephiroth. With his superhuman speed, strength, and durability, Sephiroth was instrumental in ensuring Shinra's victory in the Wutai War, conquering the last free nation on the planet. He returned home a legend. But all those warm, fuzzy feelings of victory didn't last long. While on a mission to the town of Nibelheim, Sephiroth found a bunch of books on the Genova Project. That's when he discovered he was a secret science project the whole time. The truth crushed Sephiroth and drove him mad. In a rage, he annihilated Nibelheim, but was stopped by a mercenary named Cloud Strife. Sephiroth was impaled by the Buster Sword and fell oh. to his death. Oh, well, that's disappointing. Which is what I would have said if Sephiroth hadn't dropped into a hole in the ground that led him to the giant window screensaver called the Lifestream. The life stream is a buried river of energy which basically maintains life across the planet. 
Normally, merging with the life stream is the equivalent of entering the afterlife, but not for Sephiroth. And this is where things get weird, so buckle up. Still conscious, Sephiroth's essence floated through the life stream for years until he absorbed enough energy to rebuild his body. With the energy of the life stream, he could control other beings with Genova cells. Including the corpse of Genova, who he manipulated like a puppet and disguised as himself. Oh, what the hell? That's his mom? Who would do that to their own mom? I mean, I know she's a genocidal alien monster, but come on! Probably makes a good breakfast. But Sephiroth's descent into the life stream offered him even more. It transformed him from a mere super soldier into the most dangerous being on the planet. He's strong enough to throw a man hundreds of feet skyward, move at supersonic speeds, and withstand brutal stab wounds Omega through vital organs. Wing. He's got illusion wow. powers that can trick people by creating an entirely fake scenario. He can lift people with his mind, and including himself, and then he can just fly. That's how it works, right? Additionally, Sephiroth can cast magic thanks to his on-hand materia. Materia is crystallized life energy which grants different powers according to the type of material used. Uh, this lets Sephi attack with fire, lightning, ice, and earth-based magic. He can block attacks with barrier and reflect, and heal himself with cure and regen. And ever since jumping into the life stream, he's had unlimited access to his magical powers. With his new godlike abilities, Sephiroth began a plan to stop mankind from drying up the planet's life force. That doesn't sound so scary. Does that mean he's an environmentalist or...? But to do this, he decided to use black materia to summon a giant meteor to destroy the planet and absorb all of its life energy for himself. So like, an opposite environmentalist. A planet vampire. I mean, we're talking about Sounds a guy like who kicked a, a dude through solid concrete, murdered the crap out of a 30-foot serpent with a spike through the face, and tanked a dragon's flamethrower attack without even getting a teensy bit hurt. A particularly impressive feat considering wow. this attack was capable of one-shotting like fellow soldier old. Zach Fair. Uh, Wiz, you may need to up your prescription, because wow. that's definitely Cloud. No, 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 Cloud was just recalling false memories there. It was really Zack. However, it was Cloud who impaled Sephiroth pre-livestream with the Buster Soul. And holy God, is it huge! It's like two feet wide! You'd think a stab from that thing would just cut him in half, but Seph just kind of shook it off. And in his rematch with Cloud, he blocked an attack strong enough to crater the metal around him. Considering the wow. diameter of the crater, the surface area of Sephiroth's feet, and assuming the most likely steel composition, I estimate this attack to equal nearly 1,600 tons of force. Sephiroth can use that wicked sword to stab and lift wannabe heroes by their ribcage, slice through skyscrapers, and shoot energy beams that can shred these huge Mako cannons. And from the life stream, Sephi figured out he could create new bodies or even take on other forms. These forms greatly resemble certain creatures found in Christian and Jewish mythology. He certainly looks the part when he goes into his ultimate form. Regardless, Sephiroth does possess a single black wing, a blatant symbol of his fall from grace. So basically Final Fantasy does everything it can to not be subtle. Just like Sephiroth's most devastating attack, Supernova, which decimates an entire solar system. Wait. Zeph is that powerful? How does anyone ever beat him? Don't get the wrong idea here. There's a lot of debate over how Supernova actually works, but I think it's pretty clear that Sephiroth isn't creating the explosion himself. Rather, he's transporting his foes to a specific point in time within an alternate dimension. Careful, Wiz. Don't sell him short. Just look at it. When he uses the attack, reality literally crumbles away like glass. This is identical to the animation for certain summoned creatures. According to the official Crisis Core Complete Guide, summons draw their targets into their own space in order to attack, and this is no different. In the city of Fighting Games, Sephiroth goes for the simple approach and opens a dimensional hole to the explosion. The attack is even described as sending destruction even into other dimensions. And if he could summon planet-busting meteors at will, why did he go through so much trouble to get the Black Materia, which literally summons meteors? That would explain why the supernova doesn't hurt him. He's not really there, just using those illusion powers of his. With all these powers, I can't believe Cloud and friends were able to take him down. He's not invincible, but he's damn powerful. Ever persistent, Sephiroth departed with a final chilling promise. I will never be a memory. Oh. Why does he sound so bored? 2,000 years ago, 
Hold up. I didn't know all of that about Sephiroth. That might be a problem for Virgil, man. Or it could be pretty evenly matched. I love me some Devil May Cry. I mean, I, uh, and I like Final, uh, Final Fantasy as well. What was it? Final Fantasy 7, I think he was in. And I used to just play that damn game. Like, I got hooked on that game, me and my cousin. It was crazy. We used to just play that game all the time. We, like, played in shifts. You know what I'm saying? And I still never beat the game. I didn't get too far. I got them pretty powerful. But I didn't know all of that about Sephiroth. That dude's a problem. Let's go. A great mutiny transpired in the underworld. The demon warrior Sparta rebelled against his evil master, Mundus. To protect the world, Sparta did his best to seal the connection between Hell and Earth. But then Sparta got lonely. Or maybe it was just a sausage fest in there. Either way, he snuck out of Hell long enough to knock up this chick named Eva. <laughs> and she popped out a couple of awesome demon slayers. Nice choice. You may remember the younger of the two, Dante. Oh yeah, he fought that witch chick with the hair. But the yeah. eldest and potentially deadliest brother was the one and only Virgil. Virgil and Dante were rivals from birth. Dante was a goofball. Virgil was serious. Dante hated his being a demon, and Virgil loved it. It's that classic odd couple scenario. But then one fateful day, in an act of vengeance against the late Sparta, a group of rogue demons separated the two brothers and killed their mother. Virgil was believed to be dead. But in reality, Virgil survived and set out on his own path to seek his father's immense power for himself. And he's 100% equipped to be a butt-kicking demon slayer just like his pops. As a half-demon, Virgil can jump several times his own height, move at supersonic speeds, and heal himself quickly, kind of like that Wolverine guy. He can tough out getting stabbed through the lungs, intestines, the heart, body parts I'm pretty sure most people need. Not if my experiment has anything to say about it. You say something, Look Wiz? That, I said not if Virgil's abilities have anything to say about it. Well, sadly, for any human demon or human demon who gets in his way, Virgil also happens to carry some extra deadly weapons on hand, including a spiffy katana called Tomato. Yamato. Eh, it's said that this sword can cut through anything, even dimensions, and probably tomatoes. Actually, Yamato is the exact thing Sparta used to seal hell from Earth in the first place. Virgil's sword fighting prowess draws from his Dark Slayer fighting style, which emphasizes teleportation, lightning quick movements, and even quicker slashes straight from the sheath. This technique is directly influenced by Ei Jutsu, the real-life Japanese art of the quick draw. And thanks to you Virgil's know, demonic powers, he can attack so fast the blade half. seems invisible. Yeah, the only thing better than fighting with one sword is fighting with eight! With Virgil's ghostly summoned swords, wow. he can turn himself into a living Beyblade, fire them like a machine gun, or make it rain! That one was Blades may be Virgil's bread and butter, but if he needs to focus on brute strength, he switches to Beowulf. It's crazy he can to charge up blink of an eye punches come. and kicks that hit like How a cement truck come, made of dude. lead and KO some of the Graphic toughest demons lines. in just a few hits. And hey, <clears> looks like he takes Street movement. Fighter. There's one more it's trick crazy. up Virgil's sleeve. Thanks to his demon blood, he can access a form known as Devil Trigger. And this mode amplifies everything. His Dang. strength, speed, and healing all get a huge boost, making him several times deadlier than before. Plus, he just looks badass. In his quest to become as powerful as his father, Virgil's abilities skyrocket. He's taken down dozens of demons in the blink of an eye, and escaped an illusion from the Sorcerer uh, Arkham, which makes normal people go crazy. But if anything's gonna show off what a son of Sparta can really do, it's pitting him against his bro. Sure, Virgil can easily avoid Dante's bullets, but why dodge them when you can spin your sword, line them all up, and fire them back like a boss? In the same battle, they briefly created a 12-foot diameter open space in a heavy rainstorm with nothing but their sword swings. On average, storms can fill a cubic foot space with as many as 30 raindrops. So Virgil and Dante must have destroyed 108,000 raindrops in less than a second. Yeah, if Matt Virgil can crazy, swing though. his sword that fast, I bet he'd make a killing mowing lawns, or chopping meat at the deli, or giving haircuts, or doing that thing where he chops bad guys to pieces so fast they don't even realize they're dead yet. Like when he fought Beowulf. 
the oh. monster, not the weapon. And then he punched him so hard, he flew 55 feet up and hit the ceiling. When comparing Beowulf's size to Virgil, he appears to be as large as an elephant. Given what's available, this seems like our best measure of Virgil's we'll strength, but math. there is one issue. The Devil May Cry series makes frequent use of slow motion to depict the absurdity of these characters, and this could be a similar case. So let's look at another slow-mo feat, the rainstorm fight. At one point, the rain freezes in place for about two and a half seconds, as Virgil and Dante keep moving, indicating a 14,500% speed increase in real time. Applying the same degree to the Beowulf punch gives us an acceleration speed of about 4,882 feet per second. With that in mind, we can apply our previous data to deduce the maximum height sand ceiling and determine Virgil's striking strength to be nearly 720 million newtons of force. That's a lot! It matches Virgil's incredible toughness, too. We already mentioned his super healing factor, but it's even more overpowered than you think. Virgil once got completely cut in half, but healed so fast that it's impossible to even notice. And his regeneration ability can be worn down. Yeah, that's how this weird jester guy beat him. But it takes a lot to pull off. I remember and Virgil that can guy. always just wow. use Yamato to hop through dimensions to get away if he wants. Sadly, Virgil never got to rule the demon realm like he wanted. Instead, the Demon King Mundus permanently transformed Virgil into his puppet, irreversibly manipulating his mind in the process. And then Dante kind of, uh, exploded him. But one or two losses against someone who's basically goddamn Satan hardly makes him a weakling. Hell and Earth trembles before the power of Virgil. It'll be fun to fight with the Prince of Darkness. If my father did it, I should be able to do it too. Hold up. Now, one thing I wanted to say was with the information they have just given, I think they kind of told who's going to win. Um, I know I said Virgil at the beginning, but now I think Sephiroth is going to win. Two reasons. One, all of the powers that they said this dude has, cross-dimensional and, and supernovas and just destroying pretty much things, like an attack destroying things in another dimension is just freaking bananas, alright? Um, Virgil, um, wait, second reason being they said Virgil's uh, healing factor um, is limited. So, I think he gonna wear him out until he can't heal no more and then boom, he gonna win it. You know? Or one of his attacks are gonna be too much and won't, won't do nothing. Um, they also said Virgil got bested by that dude that looks like the bootleg Joker, you know. So, I think that's what's going to happen now. Um, but, like, I think Virgil has been in enough battles already with so many different adversaries that he would be smart enough to best Sephiroth. But let's see what's going on. The Sephiroth nasty from what they showed. Virgil's disgusting. It's just one big nasty mixture. Let's go. Hmm. You are powerful. I can see it. Sword is seven feet long. That's like a person. Who are you? Your despair. Okay, you're strong. 
but are you fast enough? Don't move. Uh -oh. I suppose it can't be helped. Stop wasting my time. the fabric of our dimension, so I cast an illusion to disguise this witness oblivion. Oh, two were extremely powerful swordsmen, but Sephiroth's See? cunning and stronger abilities led to his victory. Wait a minute, I thought the lore said Virgil's sword could cut through anything. Why didn't it cut through Sephiroth's sword? Yamato was a unique weapon, but its legend clearly exaggerated. On multiple occasions, it's clashed with Dante's blade and even a common rocket launcher without cutting through either, and sometimes requires an exuberant amount of force to cut through tougher material. But let's discuss the real facts. Like strength. So Virgil with Beowulf could do 720 million newtons, right? But there aren't a lot of good Sephi strength feats to compare. First, let's compare Sephiroth to a fellow first-class member of the soldier fighting force who had also been experimented on with Genova cells, Zack Fair. Remember him? He's the not cloud guy who fought that dragon. At his peak, Zack could cut through a large metal door with one swing, seemingly with most of his strength. Given the size and width of the door, this feat's sheer strength comes out to 980 million newtons. And Seph was way stronger than Zack. In fact, if we look at their strength stats when they fought that dragon, Sephiroth was three and a half times stronger than Zack. Putting Sephiroth's strength output at over three billion newtons. That's almost as much force as 30 Hiroshima bombs. Strength isn't everything though. Virgil was technically faster than Sephi, but Sephiroth has handled people of similar speeds before. Plus, Sephiroth could survive plenty of hits because his healing power is broken. The capabilities uh. of Virgil's healing factor was nearly unprecedented, but it had its limits. Okay. In contrast, Sephiroth's healing abilities were only limited by his pool of magic, which was unlimited. Well, he also had to take some time to cast each healing spell, but that's why he distracted Virgil with his illusions. We know Virgil was susceptible to illusionary and mental attacks, as it's happened to him multiple times and even led to his in-canon demise. And Sephiroth's illusions could hide his ultimate technique. Yeah, Virgil's healing was pretty awesome, but it was never gonna hold up under an exploding sun to the face. Virgil put up a good fight, but he couldn't match Sephiroth's superior strength, magic, and techniques. Looks like this devil's cried for the last time. The winner is Sephiroth. Told you. Damn, Chad, I play Boomstick. Ben, I play Wiz. If you want to get the fight music for this episode of Death Battle, just click the link in the description and you can pick I it up on iTunes. iTunes. You can get music from Thor vs. Wonder Woman, Naruto vs. Zichko, a bunch of Death Battles. And if right. You guys can go on over to their Death Battle page and you can see this episode and um, any other episodes that they have up. So... Yo, I told you, I told you. They friggin' said it. He said it in the, uh, when they were talking, when they were explaining what each power, each person's powers were. 
They explained it all. And the minute I heard them say Virgil's was limited, I knew he was going to lose. You know? Um, now, do I think, do I agree with the outcome based on the information? Yeah, I do. I do. That's why I had changed what I said. Um, do I think Virgil could have won? Yes, I do think he could have won if he had more info on Sephiroth. Virgil was just going in blind. He was going in cocky, I feel, which is what he always does. Him and Dante, some cocky dudes. Um, and I think if he had the info, he would have taken it a lot more serious and he would not have uh, toyed around with him like he did because a lot of that was was like toying around to see just how strong he was, I feel like, you know what I'm saying, and I think Sephiroth just came in and just got right to the nitty gritty, like, oh, okay, you're strong, I'm about to end this right now, you know what I'm saying, um, also, the fact that Sephiroth is, he has unlimited supply of magic, and his healing factor is based on his magic, it's like, the only downfall of that is the time it takes for him to cast a spell to heal. That's that's freaking what, what the what the hell, yo. So he could be hurt, put up mad illusions, and then just cast a spell to heal. It, like you're you're not beating that dude like that. You're not beating anybody like that. That's just my opinion. Um. So yeah, I agree with it. I like the battle. The sword play was popping. I like the way the animation was. It looked like uh like like the old um, Xbox Generation One. Or PlayStation 2-ish, maybe 3, uh, when the uh, computer, when the, when the games were more non pixel -ish. Like, you can still see edges, but it wasn't as smooth as it is now. I like the way they did that. It was kind of nostalgic of, of, of actually playing those games back then, which is dope. Uh, but until then, let me know what y'all think, man. Shout out once again, Mike Holback. Good looking on that. I did enjoy it. Um, I will say this. If um, there is a copyright claim done on this, or if it is banned again, I'm going to have to take it down. Um, it's getting real hard. Even though I pretty much just started, it's getting hard to do things on here without getting some type of problem from somebody. Now, all I'm doing is reviewing this and giving my opinion on it, and apparently, they just don't like it. I don't know. But, um, it's stupid. It should fall under fair use, um, which is also in the description box below, and I'll probably start uh, putting it in my videos in the very beginning. So, if you see it in the videos, that's why it's there. Um, hit the like button, subscribe button, share button, and I'll see all of y'all next time, alright? Take care of yourselves, stay healthy, be well.